So the very last section uh, for writing chemical formulas is oxidation numbers. Um, and oxidation numbers are sometimes confusing to people because it's kind of, it's, it's not exactly a charge. Um, and an ionic charge and an oxidation number can be the same, but an oxidation number doesn't necessarily have to be the same. So what an oxidation number does um, is it basically it keeps track of who's positive and who's negative. Um, so you may want to write that down. So it keeps track of who is positive and negative. And again, we're just kind of seeing who really we know is most likely to have gained the electrons and who is most likely to have lost the electrons. So while it's not always the same as an ionic charge, it can be very similar. Um, and there's just some major rules you have to follow. Um, and then you're good to go. So what we'll do is we'll go over the rules. We will do um, some weirdos, and then we're going to do four as an example, and then you can do the last um, two just to make sure you're okay. So here are the rules. The most important ones, um, let me, are, if it likes me, these guys right here. So um, the ones that are most important are these guys at the bottom here. So fluorine is always, always, always negative one. And these are your best friends. So fluorine is always negative one. He never compromises. He is absolutely always negative one. Oxygen is 95% of the time negative two. Actually, probably even more than negative two. Um, um, if, if I tell you it is a peroxide, then oxygen has to be negative one. And an example of a peroxide, the most common example, is hydrogen peroxide. Um, again, at this level of class, you wouldn't be expected to like memorize what are peroxides. So, but you are expected to know that if I tell you something is a peroxide, that oxygen has kind of a funky charge. He's not he's not acting like himself. And if oxygen is forced to bond to fluorine, because remember, fluorine is like the the big man on campus. He never changes. Um, then that means oxygen has to be plus two. And then the last ones, um, if hydrogen is with nonmetals, he ends up being plus one. So basically that usually means if he leads. And if um, hydrogen is with metals, then he tends to be minus one. Um, so those are your, those are the ones that kind of tell you everything. Here are some more rules up here that kind of just tell something that you have to follow. The first of which it says if you have a pure element, its oxygenation number is zero. So if I have a, a clump of aluminum foil, there's no charges on it, I don't tell you anything else about it, then you know his charge is zero. If uh, For the second rule, it says the charge, if, if you have a, a monatomic ion, um, its oxidation number is its charge on the ion. So say, for example, I have aluminum plus three, well then his oxidation number is plus three. So this first one, if it's just aluminum, his oxidation would be zero. But if I have, if it has a charge, it's inherently going to act different. His oxidation would be that plus three. If you have a neutral compound, they're going to add up to zero. So a real easy example of this is if we think of salt. We know sodium is plus one. We know chlorine is minus one. And if you add those up, plus one and a minus one, you get that zero charge here. The very last thing you have to worry about is what if you have a polyatomic ion? So if I have like sulfate. Um, we're not going to go through and actually figure out all of the oxidation numbers right now. We'll do that in the next slide here. But whatever sulfur is and whatever each of these oxygens are, when I add them all up, it's going to add up to this negative two. And you're going to be aware of this because they're going to tell you what this is. You're never going to have to guess. Um, but if they tell you, hey, this thing has to add up to negative two, you need to make sure that you um, follow that. And then the last time thing is if you don't have enough information from your best friends down here, fluorine, oxygen, hydrogen, and just simple oxidation numbers, then you have to go to the periodic table. Um, the periodic table is a last resort. So you typically only use this if you have to. Because there are a lot of things that can misbehave and not follow the rules. But if you go to the periodic table, if you're in the alkali metals, you're going to be plus one. 
if you're in the alkaline earth metals, you're plus two, and then so on and so forth, as we've been going over, we went over in chapter one. So again, these are your last resort, though. Um, like, this is the halogens, they're negative one if they're in binary things. Um, this is the chalcogen group, stuff like that. Again, these aren't as commonly used because they're the last resort. And the last weirdo thing uh, that we have really is at the very top here is if halogens bond together. So if you think of the halogen group, it's group number 17. It's right next to the noble gases. They're typically minus one. Um, but sometimes weird things happen with elements, and they actually do bond together. So um, if that happens, you follow this rule right here. The lighter element is the negative one, and whatever the heavier element is, varies. So if you look here, we have an example, bromine bonded to fluorine. This can actually occur. It's kind of freaky, but it can happen. So you look on your periodic table and you say who is lighter. And um, in this case, fluorine is lighter. So that means fluorine would be a minus one. And then what we would have to do is say, okay, for this to be true, what does bromine have to be? So this is a neutral compound, which means it has to add up to zero. We know that fluorine is minus one, which means that in this case, bromine, even though it's very weird, would have to be a plus one. And again, the, the rule is just whichever one is lighter is always the minus one. And that's really why fluorine is always minus one, because he is the lightest halogen. So no one overrules him. He always, he always wins. And if you look over here, this is another one of those weird situations with the halogens. We have iodine bonded to chlorine. You look on your periodic table and you find out who literally is lighter. Uh, in this case, chlorine is lighter, so he gets minus one. And then what you have to do is figure out what iodine is. So you can do this in your head. You can do it with a little bit of algebra. But basically what you're saying is you have one times x for your iodine plus three times negative one for your chlorine. And this is all going to add up to zero because there is no charge on it. You solve for x, which is going to equal iodine, and that would be plus 3. So when I ask you for oxidation numbers, this is what I'm looking for, the oxidation of each individual element given. So like I said, we're going to try four together, and then you'll try two on your own just to make sure you're okay, and then that's it. All right, so if we're looking at this first one, um, it's, it's a practice problem. And what you're going to look for is you're going to tell me hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And you want to use your best friends first. So the first one you say, okay, are any of these in, in the best friend category? And one of them that is, is hydrogen. Hydrogen is bonded to non-metals. Nitrogen and oxygen are non-metals, and that means that he's probably going to be a plus one. So if you know the rules, just by being clear on what the rules are, you actually know an oxidation number. So you would get a point for knowing that hydrogen in this case is plus one. The other guy that is a best friend is oxygen. It's not a peroxide. He's not bonded to any halogens or anything like on the, um, our rules, so he's probably a minus two which means the only one we don't know is nitrogen. And what we do for that is, again, you can do it in your head or you can write it out with some al algebra, but you're just going to go through and solve it. And what I do is I say, okay, I have one hydrogen, and I said he was plus one. I have one nitrogen, and I don't know what he is, so that's the X. I have three oxygens, and we said they were minus two. And then again, because there is no charge in this, there's no like pluses or minuses around it, um, it's a neutral compound, and it's going to add up to zero. And then all you're doing is just doing simple math. So we have one plus x minus six equals zero, which means that nitrogen is plus five, and x is plus five. And then this right here would be our answer, the H, the O, and the N. So that's what I'm looking for when I say um, I'm looking for oxidation numbers. Uh, number two is a pretty simple one because there's only two elements. You say, okay, who is any best friends here? And we have fluorine. And again, fluorine is super easy because he never changes. He's minus one. So we just have to do xenon. You can probably just do this one in your head. We have four negative ones. It's a neutral compound. 
That means we need to even things out, which means that xenon has to be a plus 4 charge. And again, that's all you really need for that one. If you want to write out the algebra, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. And you should be able to do most of it in your head. All right, I'm actually going to here. We're going to do two on this page. We're actually going to do four and five together, and you're just going to do three and six to make sure you're okay. So four, the only thing you have to be careful about four is it actually has a charge now. So it's just slightly different. But again, you look for your best friends, and we know oxygen is our best friend. You're going to like oxygen a lot. He's not in a peroxide. I'm not telling you it's a peroxide. He's not bonded to a halogen, so he's minus two. That means we have to sulfur, or solve for sulfur. And again, you just do it in your head, set up a little algebra. I have one sulfur, so I have one times x, four times a negative two. Now, the only thing that's different here is that there is a charge. And you can see here, it says minus two. So instead of making it equal to zero, well, now we need to actually make it equal to this charge right here. If this said plus seven, I would put plus seven at the end. If this said minus 17, I would put minus 17 here. But it says minus two. So I write minus 2, and I solve and get that x is plus 6, which means that my sulfur is plus 6. So again, you only have to worry about that if it gives you that charge. And the last one we're going to do together is number 5, and then I'll give you the answers to the other ones here. Um, and this is what happens when someone like you don't have enough information generally. So you look and you say, okay, do I have any best friends or anything? The only one we have is oxygen. Again, it's not with a halogen, it's not a peroxide, so it's a minus 2. And then you say, okay, what do I do? Because I need potassium and I need chromium. Um, when you're left with more than one question mark, you have to go to your periodic table. This is that last resort. And what you're looking for are um, the elements that are more on the, the edge of the periodic table. Um, when you're on the edge of the periodic table, you tend to behave better. You're, you're more, you are more dependable. Um, so what you do is you see, okay, where are these elements? Potassium is in the very first row. It's in alkali metal. Chromium is a transition metal. And if you remember about transition metals, they can have lots of charges. So he's probably not the most dependable guy to look up on the periodic table. What that means is we're going to depend on potassium. We say, okay, what are alkali metals? And if you go back to your rules in the notes, alkali metals are group one, and it says that they're usually plus one. Once you have that, then you can easily solve for chromium. But again, you have to make a judgment call. You have to say who is the most dependable person in this um, to do it. Then all we do is solve. We have two potassiums that are plus one. We have two chromiums that are x, seven oxygens that are minus two, and again, this has no charge, so it's going to add up to 0. So we have 2 plus 2x minus 14 equals 0. Um, you solve it out, and we should get that x equals plus 6. And that's what chromium is. And again, when I'm asking if you're, for you, these are what I'm looking for, the each element and its individual charge. Not multiplied by how many. I'm looking at one oxygen, what's its charge? One potassium, what's its charge? So um, I'll pause it. We'll put the answers up. You can practice um, them. And then what we can do when you come back and um, after you're done pausing it, you can see if you get it. So here are the answers for three and six. Um, make sure that you can solve for them, make sure that you can get them. If not, um, obviously make sure you really do the homework, make sure you work with some people. Um, but this, there will be a little section on this in your test.